Hi everybody, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Madam Ruby here again, logging in for lesson 54, collision theory and transition state theory. We are going to define collision theory, explain the requirements for effective collision, which is minimum energy and correct orientation. And for transition state theory, we are going to define activation energy of a reaction with reference to the energy profile diagram, define activated complex, and state their characteristics. Collision theory states that molecules must collide in order to react. Here, we can say the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the number of collisions over T meaning per second. Molecules also must possess a certain minimum kinetic energy called activation energy Ea. It is to initiate the chemical reaction. If you don't have Ea, the reactions cannot occur. The third principle of the collision theory is that molecules must collide in the correct orientation in order for the reaction to occur. For example, we have the potassium atom here. If it collide directly, correctly orientated to the side of iodine here, the reaction will occur. But if potassium collided here on the back side where it will uh, collide with hydrogen, the reaction cannot occur. So we can say here that this reaction is most favorable only when the potassium atom collides with the iodine atom in CH3I head-on. Otherwise, few or no products are formed. In this figure, you can see the importance of orientation. For the green ball or the green atom here, if it collided to the green atom as well, it will form a green molecule diatomic molecule but if it collided at the red atom it would not um, create the reaction so this is basically an effective collision what is an effective collision for reaction to occur molecules must collide not only with sufficient activation energy but with proper orientation. Effective collision is the collision that results in chemical reaction. Next, we're going to learn about transition state theory. What are they? We know that the configuration of the atoms of the colliding species at the time of the collision is called the transition state. There is a state where it's going to become a transition state. Species formed at transition state is called activated complex. In order to react, the colliding molecules must have total potential energy equal to or greater than the activation energy Ea. Let's look at where the activation energy is in the profile energy diagram. This is a profile energy diagram where you have energy on the y axis and time products or reactant on the x-axis. The activation energy is the minimum energy required to initiate the chemical reaction or the definition is the minimum kinetic energy that the molecule must possess in order for the chemical reaction to occur. So as you can see here, the reactant has a higher energy compared to product, so this would be exothermic. And then uh, the activation energy is on top of this hill. So uh, it's going to become product as soon as it achieves the activation energy. Activation energy enable chemical bonds to break and arrange themselves. The atoms and valence electron will be um, reorganize as the reaction proceed. We know that for exothermic reaction, the delta H is negative and for endothermic, it's positive. So we can see that in the reaction profiles or energy profiles where activation energy can be drawn. 
here is an energy profile for um, exothermic reaction and exothermic reaction whereby the reactant has a higher energy compared to the products and we can see that the ea is here and um, the delta h is between the reactant and product yes the difference in potential energies between product and reactants is the delta h reactant molecules must have enough energy to overcome a barrier separating products from reactants EA. So you can see here, EA is on top of reactant before it comes to the delta H. So in this um, profile energy diagram, we can see that on top of the uh, activating energy, you can see uh, transition state. Uh, so that's why we uh, call this is transition state theory. We we use activation energy and at uh, the highest energy peak, we have the activated complex. Uh, so the EA is there and then the EA uh, will uh, be used and then uh, delta H is used whereby the activation energy for reverse reaction would be the accumulation of delta H and EA. This is an example of a reaction between carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide gas. Okay, for endothermic process, we're going to plot a different energy level diagram where you can see here the reactant has a lower energy compared to product. So as you can see, um, activated complex is on top of the peak and then the EA would be as much as that peak because it's coming from reactant. So it's very large here. Okay, And then as it goes down, this value is an EA reverse reaction. Where's the delta H? Yes, the delta H is between product and rectin over here okay so there's a difference between exothermic and endothermic reaction in terms of their ea forward reaction activated complex and ea reverse reaction we should be able to draw this energy profile diagram when we are given any reaction or equation this is an example of an endothermic reaction where you can see an ocl is dissociated to become 2 and O and Cl2 whereby the reactant is here and then the whole peak here is representing the EA and then this is the delta H here between the delta H and the peak would be the uh, activated energy for the reverse reaction we should also uh, should know that when we put both of the energy profile um, side by side, we're going to see the difference here. The reactants A and B with the product C and D. You can see the EA is smaller for exothermic, whereas it is bigger for endothermic. Okay, for this subtopic, we don't have example for the lecture video. So we're going to use the practice. A and B is the reactant, C and D is the product, and the enthalpy change. Enthalpy change is delta H as positive 21. This is endothermic. The activation energy A is 84. So let's sketch the reaction profile diagram. This is energy. Okay, please label any graph you're going to draw. This is time. Or you can just put reactant or product. It is a progress of reaction. So let's have a reactant here, A and B. And then let's draw the peak. And the product will be somewhere over here. So we draw A and B over here, C and D over here. So the question said the delta H would be here. That is the delta H 
which is uh, 21 kilojoule per mole. Okay, you can see that it is between the product and the reactant. And then it says also the activation energy is 84. So 84 is here. 84 is the EA. 84 kilojoule per mole. So the question is, what is the activation energy for the reverse reaction? The EA for the reverse reaction is here. Right? So 84 minus 21 is uh, 63 right? kilojoule per mole. That's your answer. Okay, let's answer the second question. Draw a potential energy diagram for an exothermic reaction. Indicate on the drawing potential energy of the reactants and the products. Okay, so we have to draw the y-axis energy and then the x-axis. So this time I want to label it as progress of reaction. Okay, so... Um, yeah, the reactant would have a higher energy compared to product. So here is the reactant and here would be the product. Uh, this is what it meant by the first answer, first question, sorry. The activation energy for the forward and the reverse reaction. So you uh, do a graph here and put the activation energy has having a small peak and then go down there this is the product uh, the product would be the same level as this one lah. okay so we can always label um, c and d and a and b just now if for example the equation is given but if it's not, then you can choose anything. Uh, okay, so the activation energy for forward would be here, EA. And then the um, delta H would be here, the heat of reaction. That's for C. The heat of reaction is actually delta H. So this is delta H. And the uh, activation energy for the reverse reaction... Uh, is this one okay this one is forward okay so basically you're going to get at least three to four marks when you answer this question in an SEO structured question let's talk about a little bit uh, on the activated complex what are the characteristics activated complex is a species temporarily formed by the reactant molecule as the result of the collision before they form the product. It is very unstable. It has a short half-life. Its potential energy is greater than reactants or product, both. And the activated complex and the reactants are in chemical equilibrium. It will decompose to form products or reactant for reverse reaction. Thank you very much for listening. And that is all for collision theory and transition state theory. Bye. Assalamu alaikum.